Yo! I can't even lift my arm properly anymore. What is up guys? Today, we're going to be overhauling the headlights on the Gallant. Now, as with anything I do on this channel, you guys have got to keep in mind, this is not a how-to. Uh, I'm not a professional, I have no clue what I'm doing, uh, and I know that a lot of the stuff I do is shady uh, compared to professional practices. So keep that in mind, uh, this is just me documenting myself uh, and my journey through this. Um, and boy, do I learn a lot in this episode. Uh, this was a big one, um, I've cut a lot of it out, um, but I've on a massive outro on the end of it so that for those of you who are really interested in doing this yourself you can listen to everything uh, I learnt and hear about every screw up I made so that you don't have to. We're going to be retrofitting some HID projectors into the current headlights. Uh, we're going to be throwing some 35 watt HIDs into it. Uh, we're also going to be changing the parkers and the signal lights um, and in the future videos uh, I'll also restore the lenses but that's for later. Enough with the talking, let's get to it. So these are the parking lights and that is my low beams. They look okay on camera but uh, yeah they're pretty horrendous. Uh, they scatter light everywhere. I actually noticed that it almost looks like I'm high beaming even when I'm on low beam. As you can see it's, it's fairly level and quite nice and low. I reckon the foggier kind of lenses uh, definitely play a part in scattering light but the light output itself is just abysmal. It looks like a set of lanterns. What an absolute mission guys. The first headlight is done. Uh, what I'll do is I'll work on the second one um, and you guys will hear about all the mistakes I made the first time around. I've also thrown in some Oxito LEDs so as you can see the stock one it's not very bright uh, you can judge that off the reflection on the wall there and then you look at that one the Oxito and that is a lot brighter so that's awesome. I've removed all the bulbs um, out the back here and you also want to make sure you remember to get your parker which is hidden just underneath the low beam. I have wiped the face and all the, the rest of the lens down with uh, some rubbing alcohol uh, just to make sure it's nice and clean and nothing bakes onto it during the heating process. 90 degrees celsius and fan forced so that we get all that hot air circulating around. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous about doing this, um, but this is kind of one of those one-shot only things because if you melt the plastic or damage the lens, it's kind of game over. Five minutes and that's at 90 degrees Celsius. It had to go back in for another two minutes because I think it's actually the adhesive down here that is just tough. Oof, I'm liking the look of things at the moment. Oh boy, that's exciting. Look how tough that adhesive is. We got the housing on the lens apart. That went really well. Uh, after doing it the first time, I was much more confident. Um, I've also got a lot less patience. You absolutely do not want to be getting fingerprints or dust on the inside. Uh, the outside's fine. They're going to be sanded anyway, and obviously you can clean them, but the inside is a whole different ball game. Alright, we've got the housing separated from the lens. Let's remove the stock projector, which we're going to be working on. So this bad boy here. And to do that, we've got one, two, three screws. There we go. So here's the projector. Take a look at it and double check that your cutoff is correct for your country. So I had to get these, I had to send the uh, seller a message and say I want right hand drive. And you'll know that by looking through into the projector, 
and seeing that it dips down onto the right hand side because it's for a right hand drive car. Uh, if you don't check this and you end up having the wrong one, it is gonna suck. All right, we've got the silicon ring here. We put it on this way and that allows a nice sealed lock uh, in between the projector and the stop projectors. This adapter ring is what suits my projector. Um, if you have a different car, you'll, you may need a different adapter. So we feed the wire through. And you wanna have a cloth underneath so that you can actually apply a bit of pressure uh, down onto the projector lens. It seems a bit risky, but you've gotta do it so that you can properly tighten your lock nut. So we put our adapter ring on and then we really carefully, really carefully place this lock ring on. So this is really soft, um, can get damaged easily and have its thread stripped. I learned that the hard way and had to order an entirely new set of projectors uh, because of that. So what you do is you just lightly finger tighten it down just so that it sits, you know, and you can make, you can still make adjustments to it, but that's how you're essentially going to want it to sit. When you're happy that everything lines up, you can go ahead, use your pliers and uh, twist it down fairly tight. It looks like in order to get this bracket to fit properly, I'll need to trim uh, part of this back using the rotary tool. So I'm masking up any holes so that we don't get dust inside because that would be disastrous uh, and I'm just going to trim this off. After I trim that little piece that was in the way off, this bracket ring now fits a lot better. We've got these tiny little screws which also are easy to strip. Um, I didn't strip them last time but didn't get the opportunity to because I screwed it up before that. We're going to just place them in and be really careful with tightening it down. To be honest, that was a lot easier than my first one and it fit a lot better for some reason. We don't have to modify this and it fits perfectly fine. So that is a huge win. What a W. This has already gone 10 times smoother than the other headlight went. Uh, so now, let's get the HID in there and see what it looks like. All right, very happy with that. Uh, nice, horizontal, clear cutoff, looking good. Uh, and this is the one with the lens on. As you can see, the cutoff is nowhere near as crisp as it is without the lens on. Uh, and what that means is this lens needs to be cleaned ASAP. And uh, that's what's gonna happen after we've done both these headlights. But look at how crisp that is. Oh, that is nice. And that is the honeycomb. Uh, it looks so good, guys. That looks so good. All right, we've tested it and we're happy with it. Uh, but before we reseal the casing, we want to make sure the high-low function works. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna fashion a little pigtail kind of situation out of this connector here and connect it up to the high-low socket for the actual projector. Now the reason I have to cut this in half is because this is meant to plug in to my high beam harness on the actual car, but the pins are too close together. Um, and that's simply because I brought the lot, bought the wrong connector. Uh, I don't know why, I'm pretty sure I bought a H7 or a H1 adapter, the, the correct one for whatever the high beam on the gallant is. Uh, and it just doesn't fit, so yeah, we're gonna make it fit by essentially splitting this in the middle. And then this side hooks up to the high beam controller so that every time the car sends out a high beam signal from the driver, it'll travel through here and into the projector and the shield will flip open, thereby exposing the high beam. So let's make sure that works.
beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this to also fit into the stock lens cover um, because there is a bit of contact. All right, there you go. As you can see, not super clean, but literally no one can see this. Uh, we just need this to be able to fit into the housing. All right, so the top's done, bottom's done. I had to widen out the top cut a little bit. Uh, I filed it down, did accidentally uh, cop a piece of the, the chrome there, but that's not no problem because no one is gonna see it. Now, ideally, you would secure this with some RTV or silicon of some sort, but this is a very snug fit. So once I've pushed it down, uh, being mindful of not touching the actual lens, like she's not going anywhere, that is tough. I am getting absolutely ravaged by hay fever guys, so apologies for the nasally voice. We've got the lens seated on the housing. Now we just got to remove all the bulbs we put in, so make sure your parkers are out. And we'll take the HID out. And uh, I've set the oven to preheat at 90 degrees Celsius for five minutes. And then we can put this bad boy in. So the key to putting it back together is while it's still warm, you're gonna put the tabs back over the clips and the key is to make sure the plastic's sufficiently warm because otherwise it'll break instead of bend. Um, and while it's still warm, go put some C-clamps on it to hold it together and let it sit for about an hour. Now we just gotta throw the boots back on and it should be all right to go back into the car. So I purchased uh, some slightly more expensive LEDs. Uh, as you can see, these are slimmer and according to the description, they also aren't too fussed about polarity. Uh, so if these go in and they work, I'll be happy. If they don't, well, I'm just gonna stick with the stock parkers. And there you have it, a set of retrofitted HID projectors. Now, I know I haven't got a lot of footage uh, regarding the finished product up yet, uh, and that's because I still haven't completely finished the project. Uh, it was cut short uh, by my uh, surgery, which means I'll have to wait till I can drive again before I can finish all of it off uh, and record the results. Um, but let's quickly go through what I learned. The first mistake I made was using the incorrect tool to try and tighten down the lock nut, which led to me stripping the thread uh, on the actual projector itself. So I had to take an angle grinder to it to get it out again, um, which then led to a delay because I had to order a new set of HIDs. My second mistake was incorrectly cutting both projector shrouds that I ordered, which meant I had to wait for those too. I then was able to tackle that a bit better when I got my hands on a Ryobi Dremel tool um, and that made life so much easier than the coping saw. 
Another mistake I made was not applying RTV to the projector shrouds uh, before resealing the headlights uh, because I put them in the oven, closed everything up, and then when I tried to polish the lens, I had to use a bit of force on it, uh, and the vibrations shook the projector loop, the projector shrouds loose, um, which then meant I had to put it back in the oven, open the whole thing up, uh, and properly silicone those down. Um, so I've yet to do that to the second headlight. The first is all sorted. Adjusting the headlights. Now, uh, in the video, that looked like I didn't even have to really do anything. That was a big thing. I used a mini rattle gun to remove the halogen housings from the actual headlights. Um, as you guys saw in the video, don't do that um, because when you go to tighten it back up, it will probably strip the thread because it's metal on plastic, uh, not metal on metal. Um, and what that meant was one of my headlights was just aimed wildly upwards um, and I tried a multitude of things to fix that in the end what I had to do was pour some super glue into the uh, the hole of the adjustment screw and then kind of tap a new thread using that super glue um, and that you know when I delicately turned it the adjustments were able to occur and now I finally have some aimed level headlights another thing I went with a set of 35 watt HIDs um, specifically. I, I, you know, I actually went to a little bit more trouble to get them because most of the kits online are 55 watt. Um, and the reason for this is I didn't want as much heat running through the system as usual. It's an old car um, and I'm using mini projectors, which means they're prone to a bit of uh, bowl burn. Um, and yeah, 35 watt HIDs tend to last twice as long as 55 watt HIDs. Uh, that was a mistake. As you guys saw in the video, the light output was really weak. Um, so what I plan to do is get a set of 55 watt ballasts, which are actually on the way. But what they will do is they will dramatically increase the light output from the HIDs um, and also step it down, um, I think a thousand Kelvin in temperature. So right now they're 6,000 K. Um, the camera, I don't know if it does a great job of showing just how blue they are. They look cool, but I really prefer white. So it'll go from 6,000 K down to 5,000 K. But this is something that we're gonna test in a, another video in the future. So let's get to the verdict. Would I recommend it as a modification? Um, yes, it's a very cool mod. Um, and hopefully with the 55 watt HIDs, not only would it look cool, but it will also generate some great light output. Um, would I recommend you do it yourself? If you're doing it just to save money, uh, probably not. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> it was stressful. It probably, in my eyes, wasn't worth it. Um, if it was just a money thing. Uh, but for me, this was all about the learning experience and boy, did I learn a lot about modifying headlights. Um, so that was cool. I'd do it again. If you're doing it for the money though, just go get it done by a professional. You'll get the perfect results straight away. You won't have to wait months and make so many different mistakes. I say it's cosmetic because I haven't been able to see an improvement as of yet. Um, and hopefully when the 55 watt HID ballasts come through, then it'll become quite functional. Um, and and I'm banking on it. So I'll make a comparison video for that in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer video. Stay tuned, we've got some more content coming and I will catch you guys on the next one. You say you've got them guns, but I've never seen you bang. You say you've got them drugs, but I've never seen you slang.